Good morning. Welcome to Holy Cross. I am Olga Sasser, and along with Emily Harrell, will be your lectors today. Today is the third Sunday of Advent. Our celebrant is Father Brock. Today's Mass is being offered for the parishioners of Holy Cross. Please take this opportunity to silence all cell phones, pagers, or any electronic device that may make noise. Our Mass schedule for the fourth Sunday of Advent, which is next weekend, will have a slight change from our usual weekend Mass schedule. On Saturday, December 23rd, we will have a vigil Mass in English at 4 p.m. and a vigil Mass in Spanish at 6.30 p.m. Mass is on Sunday, December 24th, for the fourth Sunday of Advent, will be at 8 o'clock a.m. and 10 o'clock a.m., both in English. Since Christmas falls on a Monday this year, Catholics need to attend Mass for the fourth Sunday of Advent as well as an additional Mass for the Solemnity of Christmas. The schedule of Christmas Masses is as follows. On Sunday, December 24th, we will have a vigil Mass in English at 4 and a vigil Mass in Spanish at 6.30 p.m. Midnight Mass will begin at midnight. On Christmas Day, Mass will be at 10 o'clock a.m. in English. The Mass schedule for next weekend and Christmas is also available in the bulletin. The parish office will be closed Thursday through Tuesday for the Christmas holiday. Today's Mass readings began on page 436 in your Word and Eucharist Missal. If you would like a Word and Eucharist Missal, they are available in the parish office for $30 each. Let us observe a moment of silence, recognizing we are in the presence of God.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, and in my words, in what I have done, and of what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the, do in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice. Like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels, as the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up from all the nations. The word of the Lord.
my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My soul rejoices in our God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, what are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? 
he said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, some Pharisees were also sent. and They asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandals strapped I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. So before I begin the homily, um, I just want to reiterate something that was mentioned in the announcements before the Mass, which is with regard to the schedule for Masses for this coming weekend. All right, so next weekend is going, to be, is going to be different, and the reason why is because we have two days, two big days, with a lot of Masses right next to each other. All right, we, on Sunday, of course, we have the fourth Sunday of Advent, and then the day immediately after, Monday, is Christmas. All right, so kind of unique this year. Um, so a couple of things to be said about that. The, f the first thing is that both of those days are days of precept for us. What that means is that in order to fulfill our obligations for those days, we have to go to mass for both of them, and that cannot be done with one mass. So essentially what that means is that in order to fulfill, fulfill those obligations for the fourth Sunday of Advent and for Christmas, we have to go to two different masses. And there's a, a number of different you know, ways we can try to kind of line that up with our schedules. And so that's what I want to talk about now is what the mass times are that we have scheduled for that whole weekend with the fourth Sunday of Advent and for Christmas, All right? So it'll begin on, so with masses for the fourth Sunday of Advent, that will begin Saturday evening, the 23rd. So we'll have a 4 p.m. vigil mass in English like we always do. And then we'll also have a 6.30 p.m. Vigil Mass in Spanish for the fourth Sunday of Advent. And then that following morning, Sunday morning, the 24th, we'll have an 8 a.m. Mass in English like normal, and then a 10 a.m. Mass in English, right? So the 11 a.m. is moved to 10 a.m. There will not be a Mass at 11. And then there also is not a 2 p.m. Spanish Mass on Sunday at either. And the reason why is because we need the church open to be able to decorate and get things turned around and ready for Christmas. So those are the four Sunday or the four masses for the fourth Sunday of Advent. There'll be two vigil masses, four and six thirty in Spanish, and then two more masses Sunday morning at eight a.m. and ten a.m. And then nothing else on Sunday until the evening. So in the evening we'll have two vigil masses for Christmas. So it'll be again a four p.m. vigil mass in English and a six thirty p.m. vigil mass in Spanish. Then we'll have a midnight mass, which will be at 12 a.m., midnight mass in English, Christmas morning, and then one more mass during the day on Christmas at 10 a.m. in English, and nothing else after that. So there's no later afternoon mass, no evening mass on Christmas. It's just the 10 a.m. So there's four masses for each day. We have four for the fourth Sunday of Advent and four for Christmas. And obviously all of this information will be in the bulletin as well, but I did want to mention it from here as well. So today, as you can see, is a kind of unique Sunday, right? You can see that through the use of the color rose, right? Myself and the deacon, we're both wearing these rose-colored vestments. We have the rose-colored candle on the Advent wreath lit. Why do we do that, right? There are only two Sundays of the whole year where we wear this color, right? And so it has to do with the meaning of the color. The colors that we wear during during Mass, our vestments, they all have meanings in the church's calendar. And the color rose the meaning of this color is one of joy, right? So we wear it on two Sundays out of the year, right? One Sunday during Advent and one Sunday during Lent. And each of those Sundays has a special name as well. So today is not just the third Sunday of Advent, but it also has a special name, which is Gaudete Sunday, right? Now that word Gaudete, it's a Latin word, and it comes from the Latin verb Gaudere, 
which means to rejoice, to be joyful. But the way that the verb is conjugated, I know that's a little, getting a little technical, but the way that the verb is conjugated, gaudete, is a command, right? It's mandatory. It's telling us, rejoice, be joyful. And so that is what we're commanded to do this Sunday. And if we recall our second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, he begins with a very similar command as well. He says, brothers and sisters, rejoice always, right? And so we are commanded to rejoice, right? Not asked to rejoice, not encouraged to rejoice, but commanded to rejoice. And not just today, but as St. Paul says, always, right? Without ceasing. And now if we stop to think about that, that sounds very difficult, right? Isn't that asking a little bit too much of us to command us to be joyful, to rejoice all the time, right? Because if we reflect on our experience as human beings, we know that that is not the case, right? These things, we, we go through good times, we go through bad times. Sometimes we're happy, sometimes we're joyful. Other times we're, we're suffering, we're going through difficult times and there's pain and we're not joyful during those times. So how can we be commanded to be joyful always, to rejoice without ceasing, especially in the midst of the trials that we do go through. And I think in order to understand how we can complete this commandment, how we can fulfill this commandment, we have to talk about happiness, right? What is happiness and what is it that brings happiness about? Because the reality is we are never happy randomly. We're always happy for some sort of cause. There's something that causes us to be joyful, right? If I'm hungry and I go to Chick-fil-A and I get a, you know, a meal and I go and eat it, I am joyful as I eat that meal because I'm hungry. That meal is a cause of my happiness. And it's the same with happiness in general. It's always caused by something. And so if we want to find true happiness, if we want to find happiness that lasts, happiness that is always there, we have to look for it in the right place. We have to find something that does not fade away, that does not leave us, but something that is always present and that can always be a source of joy for us in the midst of whatever we might be going through. And so it matters a lot where we seek for our happiness, where we seek fulfillment. And at the end of the day, there are really two options, right? Everything boils down to either two different things. We can search for happiness in this world and in the things that this world offers us, or we can seek for our happiness in God and the things that he offers us. And there's not really anything else outside of those two options. We can seek our happiness in this world, or we can seek our happiness with God. Now, if we seek for happiness in this world, what happens? Well, very likely, we will find some sort of happiness, right? The world does offer us a lot of good things, a lot of pleasures, and they are good. But the problem, though, is that none of them last. And if we're honest with ourselves, we know this, right? Anything that the world gives us that claims to make us happy, sooner or later, it loses its appeal. It dries up. We have to look for the next thing. And we never find that true happiness that we know we were made for. We're always left longing for something greater. And so the world never can fulfill that command for us to rejoice without ceasing. Sooner or later, the world will leave us disappointed. It cannot fulfill us. And the reason why is simple. We have an infinite capacity for happiness. We were designed for infinite happiness. The world is finite. It cannot offer anything that can truly fulfill us. That's why the world leaves us disappointed because we are, in a certain sense, infinite. We have this infinite desire, infinite capacity for happiness. The world can only offer us finite things, and it will leave us empty and disappointed. So what's our other option then? The other option is to look for our happiness in God and in what God offers us. And it's an interesting thing because God does not make us happy necessarily in the same way that the world does. The world offers us these immediate pleasures. God's happiness is something that is deeper. It goes down to the roots of our heart, but it does fulfill us and it lasts, right? Because at the end of the day, as I said, 
Everything that the world gives us fades away, but what lasts? God lasts, his love for us lasts, our relationship with him, that is what lasts. And if that is where we invest ourselves, that is where we seek our happiness, then we will find that true happiness that we long for. And it is a better happiness, as I said. The happiness that the world offers us is superficial, but God's happiness reaches down to the depths of our hearts and it fulfills us and it changes us and makes us the people that we're supposed to be. And so that's where we need to seek for our happiness, right? Not in what this world offers us, which can be very appealing, but will ultimately leave us disappointed, but rather in God, which is a quiet happiness, but it's a true happiness, and it's something that lasts. Let's ask God for the grace today that he might change our hearts, that he might help us to seek him first, to seek first what he offers us, because in doing so, we will be able to fulfill that command that St. Paul gives us, to rejoice always. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now lift up our prayers to our Heavenly Father. That the church may await the Lord's coming with hope and courage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have closed their minds to the good news may return to the community of the faithful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who trust in the Lord may not lose heart, but be renewed in faith no matter what they suffer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in our community, strangers, widows, and orphans may be supported by our generosity and care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may find eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish family who are being called by God to the religious life or priesthood, that they respond courageously and generously. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are unemployed, underemployed, or in bad work situation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have asked for our prayers, for all those who need our prayers, for all the prayers which rest unspoken deep in our hearts, and for the prayers that are written in our parish book of intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift up these prayers to you. We ask that you be grant them in accord with your most holy will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
trust thy mighty power to save and give them victory o'er the grave rejoice rejoice Emmanuel shall come to thee o Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasing to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving word, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. We lift up. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, through all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that, we all, that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. For most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Christogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be de defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hand, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks. 
He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of it, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hand, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of it, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of them. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victory, this holy victory, this spotless victory, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victory. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angels to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, the place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercy. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Body. 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 The body. The body. Sinti courage, you who are faint-hearted and do not fear. 
تاریخ ہے Behold, our God will come and he will save us. And do not fear Behold Our God will come And he will save us The desert and the parched land Will exalt The steppe will rejoice and bloom See, take courage You who are faint-hearted And do Behold, our God will come and he will save us. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. See, take courage, you who are faint-hearted, and do not fear. Behold, our God will come, and he will save us. Strengthen the hands that Body are Christ. feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. See, take courage, you who are faint-hearted, and do not fear. Behold, our God will come, and he will save us. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. See, take courage, you who are faint-hearted, and do not fear. Behold, our God will come, and he will save us. The body of Christ. Help us. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Glory be to the Father and to the Son the and to the Holy Spirit Amen. as it was in the beginning Amen. is now be forever. Amen. See, take courage, you who are faint-hearted, and do not fear. Behold, our God will come, and he will save us. The body of Christ. 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 Creator of the stars of night. The body of Christ. Thy peoples everlasting love. Lord Jesus, Savior of us all, now hear thy servants when they call. Our Father heard the hopeless cry of all creation doomed to die, and saved our lost and guilty race by yielding gifts of heavenly grace. When earth was near its evening hour, you came in love's redeeming power. Light bridegroom from his 
this chamber come forth from a maiden mother's womb. The body of Christ. At thy great name exalted now, all ye should bend, all heads should bow, all things the body in of heaven and earth adore, God, and praise thee, King, Amen. To thee, O the Holy of One, we pray, our charge in that tremendous day. The body of Christ. Defend us while we dwell below. The body of Christ. Assaulted by the deadly foe. The body of Christ. And mighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. Mighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May Almighty God bless you. Are you receiving? Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The body of Christ.
For those bringing Holy Communion to the homebound, please come forward. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary, most chaste heart of Jesus, all holy saints and angels of God, to drive away the gloom